Hi and welcome to all the racing enthusiasts out there. It's early doors on Thursday morning and we will be recording for the Friday show for the Easter weekend. So happy Easter weekend to all and hopefully you find the golden money. So we've got Grant Paddock on the line. Firstly, Grant, how are you doing? And then secondly, you tell me whoever catches the exotics on the day, the pot of gold's there for them. Yeah, morning Sheldon, morning punters, happy Easter to the punters as well for the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting card, not easy, exotic day without a doubt. Um, I think punting on the head is going to be on the back foot. Uh, I think you've got to concentrate on your exotics on Friday and um, hopefully we can put the uh, punters in the right direction. Right, we're talking about the right direction. Race number one will be the starting point at 12.30. So 12.30, you need to get your bets on. And your suggested bet to the day is the bar pot. So looking at your numbers, you've got one banker, and then you've thrown in a couple of runners in the rest of the races. First race, number one, Battle of Kursk is your current 28 to 10 favorite. Number three, just can't get enough, seven to two, with number four, King of Queen at seven to two. After that, we go six to one and better the rest. Now, looking at race number one, Grant, try point us in the right direction. Which are your top two selections? Um, Sheldon, yeah, tricky kind of a race. There's a couple of horses that have got a decent form here. Yeah. Start off here with a favourite battle of Kursk. She came to the races a couple of weeks ago and as most of these trainers, they call them quirky lately and uh, refuse to load. Has got issues at the pens, not the cleverest of horses, but um, he was backed on that day like they knew the result. Um, I'm not going to be putting him in the bipods. I'm not sure if he's going to load. King of Queen, definitely the horse with the right form in the race. Um, just can't get enough. Probably the danger and my value bet on the day number 10 a kilo gold first time on the poly um very good draw which is going to be very important tomorrow on the poly showed a lot of pace first time out just needed to run i think he's a big runner i don't see him missing the first two uh, i've gone king of queen to win it from a kilo gold um then just can't get enough in battle of curse Sheldon. Right, let's move on to race number two and just looking at your selections, you once again leaving out the favourite which is number one. You're going with numbers five, six and fourteen. Tell us a bit more. Yeah, Sheldon, I have lost the favourites. Um, you know, when you're drawn out at 14, carrying 61 kilos over 1,200 on the poly and you've been racing over a lot further, she's going to have a lot to do from that draw, I can tell you that. And, you know, being those Cape Town horses, they, they lack that early pace that you need on the poly and uh, I think she'll battle, so I'm going to pass her by. Fanny Kimball, on the other hand, ran a good third um, over the Durbanville 12, so she's used to the tight track. Um, Sharon Cotson's yard, Louis Cotua up, um, decent draw at five. And then see you in a bit. Also a big runner. First time Polly, though, could be a question mark, and the draw is not too clever at nine. But with James up taking the one and a half off, he's got to be a bit of a runner. And then a real shrewdy at 33 to one, drop down into the ratings, 52 kilos, one draw on its back, and a solid, solid front runner. I can't see this horse missing the first four tune again. And there's actually a bit of uh, value at the, on the places on tune again, the 14. My bipod, I went. Um, 5, 6 and 14 and I've tipped them 6, 5, 14 and 1. Well, there you go. You got some nice value from Grand Paddock. So, a horse for your exactors, trifectors, swingers, and the quartets. And who knows if they can place, they can certainly win. So, don't let this one run loose at a big price. That'll take us on to race number three, where Grant is bankering horse number three, which is Run For Me. Louis M. Kotwa riding for the Gavin Smith stable from a sixth draw at this point in time. And 18 runs for the 10 placings to date. Looking at this individual, second five and a half lengths to Destiny's Angel. And then that last run, third behind Sun Spectacular. So run for me. This individual certainly waiting for that door to open and could knock the door open on this occasion. Yeah, I think so, Sheldon. He was very, very, very unlucky last time out. The horse next to him jumped right across him at the pens, knocked him out, clean out of the race. He had to drop back to last, came with a good late run uh, to finish third. Uh, 
if he has a, a incident free run he should be a massive runner he's my best bet on the card he's my banker in the bike but i do hear for the stable companion the seven he knows the ex cape town horse that i see stable jockey yeah he's climbed on so that has got to be respected for those bike punters who want to go a little bit bigger um please add please add the seven he knows but um I'm definitely all in on run for me. He's dangerous there. As I say, he knows William's legacy. He's a goal. But um, I think um, run for me will get it right tomorrow. That'll take us on to race number four. And race number four will be run over 1,600 metres. And just looking at your Bipot numbers, you're going with number three, Raising Quinn. And you've also included number six for all we know, Richard Ferry and Alan Kreef from a two draw. And we have the other runner. Let's have a look here. Raising Quinn at this stage, round about an eight draw. Now, Raising Quinn, Craig Zaki jumps aboard for Jean Nell. Merit rated 74, 76 and a 78 last time out. Not too far off the action in the recent runs? Yeah, down in class, course and distance, ideally suited, massive runner. There's no doubt. For all we know, it's the same story, course and distance suited. Um, could be better on the on the um, turf. Uh, that's why I'm leaning towards raising Quinn. Uh, those two should suffice for the bipod. Bigger players, you need demigod and gold for Africa. Um, those four horses that I just mentioned, the three, the four, the six, and the seven will be will be enough for the for the pick six bipods. The three and the six should get you through. That'll take us on to heat number five, race number five, where you are going with numbers one two and five so three runners for the bar pot and just giving you an update on the current betting number two body electric is trading at five to two number four pompey warning three to one number one life on mars seven to two and then number three is seven to one along with number six and after that eight to one and better now you're going with one two and five in the bar pot grant 100% with tricky kind of a race. You know, if you look at it on paper, the source life on Mars looks an absent penalty kick. You know, he's course and distance specialist. He's got the full claim on to bring him down to a, a decent weight. Um, he's beaten far better horses than this, I've got to be very honest with you. Um, so he's definitely my first choice in the race. And then the sort of storm player from the Michelin yard working up a storm back home. <laughs> Excuse the pun. But um, they're expecting a very decent run from her. Unfortunately, drawn out nine of nine. So um, hopefully she's got a lot of gain speed um body electric new horse from the creef yard i see don't see any money for it also drawn out at eight could be a problem um, but uh, definitely first choice life on mars from body electric and storm player those three were for my bipod and um i think those three maybe add the pompey warning into the pick sixes but um i think uh, life on mars the right horse in the race here sheldon then ending off the bar pot will be race number six. So if you're surviving going into race number six, Grant will have numbers six, seven, and eight, I believe. Those will be your selections. At the early time of recording, subject to change, number two, Gimme's Laddie, 28 to 10, with number eight on the road again. Number three, Tuscan Gold is at nine to two. And then we have number seven at 11 to two. And number one, Transact at six to one. After that, they're betting eight to one and better the rest. And just having a look at the changes, number nine, Exhale is a scratching. So take out number nine, Exhale. Does that make it any easier? No, not at all. Uh, very, very tricky race. This is eight horse field. I've got three in the bipod, six, seven, and eight. Uh, my preference is for the seven. The first time they dropped this horse in, last time out of a five furlong, uh, he came with a, a very, very good late run. Two, extra 200 litres might just suit if they race the same tactics. He used to be a solid front runner, and last time he blew the starter, but it really turned uh, turned it for him, and he ran on very, very well. So I'm going to go no Torix to win it. This horse, Queenswood's coming back from a break, but he's done enough work, and he's done enough good work as well to be in the, in the shake-up. And then, obviously, the Kreef and, and, and Fari combination of uh, on the road again has got to go in. Very, very tricky race. I've, I've looked past Gimme's Laddie um, and a horse like Tuscan Golder. But this, this race, you can, you're going to need horses to get through here. I've gone um, six, seven, and eight, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, they'll get us through. 
two hurdles left to negotiate at Fairview and there'll be races seven and eight. Racing is on the poly track, so keep a close eye on those runners. As you heard, it'll be a good day's racing, the speed will be on, and if you've got a good draw, probably used to good advantage. The seventh race sees number two, Golden Pacific, from the best of the draw, Trent Mayview and Gavin Smith team up at 28 to 10. Number six, River Carreras is seven to two. Number one, Esther is trading at 11 to two. We then go out to six to one about number eight, Paris Lass, and then it's eight to one and better the rest. Let's touch on number one, Esther, first, and then on number two, Golden Pacific. Yeah, Sheldon, uh, Esther, 63 minus one and a half with Donald's claim. She loves the course and distance, decent draw. She's got to be there and thereabouts after playing the second position. Golden Pacific, I think Gavin Smith's done the right thing by taking the four off with Trent Mayhew. The big factor here is the one draw. I think she'll be a massive, massive runner. Could maybe prefer the, the 1,200 on the poly, but um, still very, very big run out of it to win it. Um, Esther's got to be there. Then a filly like Paris Lass, who shows all amounts of speed, loves a poly five furlong. She will, she'll definitely be in the money. And this new horse, River Carreras, you know, Richard would have had the choice um, to ride Esther or some Odyssey. So this obviously showing him a bit of work or it's something to look for for the future. But she's been running over 1,400 in a mile down to a very fast five furlong we've got horses like tipsy tina in the race and rose for trippy they're going to be going the clappers here but um the race should go between two one uh, and the eight and i'm tipping them in that order super at this stage of recording number 10 bonnaroo is scratch so take out number 10 bonnaroo one hurdle left to negotiate grant and for all the guys out there if they're still standing in the exotics we'll be going into race number eight where they're betting four to one the field so i'm afraid it doesn't get much easier going into race number eight so we're going to really need your expertise here how can you guide the punters in the right direction what type of bet would you be looking at a quartet a swinger an exactor what would be going through your mind if you had 100 or 200 rand to play going into race number eight? Well, first of all, if I was still alive in any of the exotics, I'd be swinging onto my ticket going into this leg, that's for sure. Definitely the most difficult race on the on the race card. Um, there's been a little bit of early money for a horse called Legal Chit Chat, the eight horse from the Jacques Stratum Yard, um, with... Cape Town form he's been, has been running over further but um, on any of that Cape Town form it could be good enough to beat a field like this and then Joyous Jubilee very good poly horse um, back on the back on his favourite surface has been campaigning on grass two draw massive runner so horses from one and two draw definitely going to have a benefit here um, I think the favourite here is, jo is a horse called C.G. Ocker very very moderate not in my play I've left her out completely I see it was a lot of it was a bit of early money for a horse of, as this one was days and win sock uh, unfortunately drawn out at nine and i know the michelle yard um the bush horse prince of denmark has been showing good work but unfortunately he's drawn right off the course so a very very tricky race for punter sheldon i suggesting a, a quartet with two roving bankers the eight and the nine and filling up with the horses one two four six so uh, that would be my quartet play. I'm tipping number nine to beat number eight, um, as well as the four and the one. Uh, very difficult. If you can afford it, it's pick six field. But um, good luck to those punters getting through the last. Well, there you have it. Grant Paddock giving us his input and suggesting goes wide as your budget will allow and you'll notice in the perms that are going to come up he has sidestep a couple of the favorites looking for a few results so grant we're going to bring up your suggested bets for the day and you can guide your legion of followers through the bets and hopefully they come to fruition yeah, thank you, Sheldon. We'll start off with the best bet, race three, number three, run for me. The value bet, race one, number 10, a kilo gold. And my suggested bet, the bipod goes as follows. We're starting off with leg one, four, and 10. By five, six, and 14. By banker three. By three and six. By one, two, five. By six, seven, eight. For 108 rand. Well, thanks very much, Grant. We always appreciate your input week in and week out. And hopefully over the Easter weekend, the guys can get some money into the pockets and have a wonderful weekend's racing. So to you and the family and the entire racing enthusiasts, all the best of luck and thanks very much for the hard work you do. Thank you very much, Sheldon, and good luck to those punters and happy Easter. Goodbye. 
Super, that's Grant Paddock, the resident expert at Fairview, giving us his thoughts on the race card meeting for the Friday, racing on the poly track. All I can say is have a wonderful weekend's racing, a wonderful Easter weekend, and hopefully on Friday, the horses do it for you on the poly.